Hello again. This is the guy from Esslingen University of Applied Sciences who does not want to get recognized. Okay, well, of course, it's me. And uh, we're still working on this kalimba thing. We did the chord, the execution of the three, or the playing of the three tones at the same time. Uh, but that's one thing that's good that we can do it, but uh, uh, maybe we want to do it the other way, like uh, an arpeggio playing one sound after the other. So if we want to do this, then we need to create an artificial pause between the three notes. And uh, we can do this uh, with the sleep command. Execution will still be parallel. In fact, the sleep and the play command will be executed in parallel, but the effect is more or less what we want. So uh, we have a sleep one, for example. So we play the note uh, 60 and then sleep at the same time. So stop the execution or pause the execution in line six until uh, for, for one beat, okay, that's uh, default beats per minute is 60. So that would be one second right now. So we sleep for one second and then only we get the execution of line seven. Let's see how, the, how this sounds. Okay, so we have no sleep between uh, seven and eight. Uh, so we get the last two notes together and add another sleep one here. And that would sound like this. Ah, uh, this sounds a little bit like uh, an announcement in, in some train or so, or <laughs> uh, an announcement to be made, like this, okay. <coughs> so now you see, that's what we did. Now we get the arpeggio, the, the chord distributed over time, and uh, our program is getting longer. So we have now nine lines of code. Well, two are empty, but still seven lines of code. And uh, this is already a little program that we have been doing here. Now, uh, since otherwise this video would be too short, uh, I will take you on a little tour through the user interface. Uh, it's quite uh, quite normal, actually. You get the, the, the top menus here. It may be a little bit different uh, depending on the platform that you use. You may use this on a Raspberry Pi, of course, uh, on a Mac, on a Windows computer. I'm using a Linux computer here. That's also a possibility. And there are minor differences, but uh, in uh, by and large, the, the user interface has the same features. So we get here some of the menus like live run codes and etc. Code, save, load. You see that for some of the things we have shortcut buttons here like run. Okay, we also have stop. We have not used that before, but stop stops the execution. You can see this in the right log window here, the log window on the right. If I hit run, the execution starts, it automatically stops now, well, now, okay, when the last sound has completely, or the last command has compu completely executed, and there's nothing more to do. So then the, the execution stops. We also can use uh, infinite loops, but we come to that later. Now, if I hit run and then stop, then our program will stop gracefully. You, you see that or you hear that the sound is not cut off. It's a little bit faded out. Nice, nice one. Uh, but that what that was what it does. So then we have the record button. You get that here as well. Start recording, etc. And uh, so when while you play around or you make something more serious with uh, Sonic Pi, you can record what you're doing into an, a, a WAV file, a WAV file. That's the format that's used on audio CDs, uh, uh, quite a raw format um, that can be converted to something more compressed like MP3 or th things like that. Um, also a good thing, it um, records what we're doing here. 
and we can save the code that we're writing and load code into the buffer with these buttons here. Then we have some things about the audio settings. Uh, some of them we can also get through the preferences I will go into in a moment. Visuals, you get the color theme, I use dark, um, and you can uh, play around here as well. I.O. We get to the preferences in a minute. Uh, view. You can select what you want to see and language. I put this finally into UK English so uh, you don't get the German buttons anymore here. Now then we have the possibility to decrease and increase the size of the, of the uh, characters here. Uh, we can enable and disable the scope. You have already seen this when I uh, hit run, you see that uh, this kind of logs the uh, or displays the frequencies and their amplitudes. So first a lower tone, a higher tone, an even higher tone, and you see uh, how long it takes for them to completely disappear even uh, when we are not really able anymore to hear them clearly. Bing. Okay. So the higher frequencies are on the right side, the lower ones on the left side, and of course uh, you get the uh, higher amplitudes produce higher values here. And we get a left and a right channel. The upper thing is the left channel and the lower is the right channel, I believe. <laughs> we, can, we can check this out when we uh, use panning. Oh, uh, so we talked about the scope uh, thingy, and this is the log window. As you have probably observed, uh, some yes, uh, something what computers frequently do, they write a lot of information information about what they're doing. Uh, this uh, helps us with finding errors, the so-called debugging. So sometimes we write code and then we execute it and it doesn't quite do what we wanted it to do. So we can look at the log window and see uh, if maybe there's a, there's a clue uh, to uh, what's wrong. Also, we see when our program does not complete, what run we have, etc. You can scroll back if you want and see that actually, although I put play here, there was actually a command executed which is synth, uh, using the kalimba synth. Uh, that's something uh, that, uh, in fact, like play is a, uh, uh, well, uh, a shortcut way for us to, to do this. Um, it actually triggers a synth and uh, uses the default or the uh, set synth uh, that we have previously chosen. But in the end, it's a little bit different syntax, but it's quite the same thing, actually. Also, you see that uh, the default or the, the set uh, amplification has been uh, recorded here in a little bit different format, and the note of 60.0 is also included here. So we could write this like this as well, but uh, we stick to the play uh, syntax for the time being until we get a little bit of, of much, much more advanced here. So then there are cues. Uh, we get to this also in a later or a much later <laughs> thing when uh, we connect external devices or an external device like a keyboard or so. Um, and, uh, well, a little bit earlier, uh, within, uh, let's say, 10 videos or so, or, uh, or 8, we, uh, when we are doing live coding and we want to trigger a different uh, sub-parts uh, of, our, of our music, one with the other, we can see the cues uh, that can trigger other parts in our, in our music program. Uh, we can see these cues here. But uh, don't get too confused by now. Uh, I think this will become clear when we actually use it. And down below, this is a new feature in version 6. Uh, well, you can now uh, uh, tap the beats per minute of some music that you hear. Uh, for example, if you hear something well on Spotify, the radio or whatever, you can tap with it. 
and well actually it produces queues okay so if I do it like this I'm tapping about a 150 or so eh, exactly 150 uh, quite a quite a hefty beat okay now what else do we have the scope can be turned on and off then we have info well it's an open source project i managed that uh, I, I mentioned that already and uh, there are lots of contributors but as you can see the most important contributor is of course uh, sam aaron and uh, uh, if you want to read about it you get some information here. Yeah. You, are, you also will find me in the list of uh, uh, contrib contributors, but uh, a very minor one, as I mentioned already. No. Um, of course, um, you can also opt for Patreon funding. Uh, that's, this is a community uh, project, and uh, I think Sam is always uh, happy for uh, if, if he gets some more Patreon funding, although it's a very uh, minor one, because this is actually how this project is funded. And then, very importantly, we get the help. We have already seen the synths. You also get information, uh, well, about how Sonic Pi works. There is a complete tutorial built into this. Okay, you can read here. Let's see, for example, synths. Uh, okay, enough of intros, etc., etc. So you get uh, uh, most of the things that I tell you uh, directly from the master. Uh, you can find this here. I, I hope it's got to be a, a compliment, otherwise the tutorial is probably much better than what I'm doing here. And uh, then examples, so you get code here that you can just uh, uh, copy and put into a buffer and see how it sounds. Quite some uh, uh, funny things inside here. We're not going to uh, try them, but just for you to see how this could be done, let's see uh, what can we do. Well, let's do some Bach minuet in G. Copy it into our buffer. Sounds like this. Okay, let's stop it. Okay, reminds me of my childhood where I had to play this on a flute. It was horrible, but uh, the music is of course very nice and Bach has some big influence also over contemporary music, uh, like uh, well, probably many people know, uh, like uh, Maroon 5 or something like that. So that's the example section, the synths, as a list of synths. We are not going right now into the details here, like the options. We are going to look at this further. We get effects. Well, that's effects. Okay, so uh, also uh, that would be uh, kind of synthesizers with, uh, with an input so that can process sound in some way. We're going to into that as well. One of the next things that we're talking about are samples, and uh, there are lots of built-in samples here. Uh, so drum sounds and then lots of sounds here. And also this we're going to talk about. And finally, very important, the things that uh, are used here, like play pattern timed, uh, they are also in the uh, contained in the language reference, like play pattern timed, well, how's that? Okay, play pattern timed takes notes, uh, a list of notes, and uh, then a list or number for the times. Also, we're dealing with this uh, when we're going a bit further with this uh, the syntax of uh, commands as we use them. So, and finally, there are the preferences. We have seen some of them in the buttons up here for audio, I.O., editor, visuals, updates, etc., etc. And, uh, well, uh, what you have just heard at the very beginning, I enabled audio inputs. I connected my microphone as an input for Sonic Pi. I, uh, I put it through an effect filter uh, which pitched uh, uh, my voice down 
by uh, three uh, nodes, and uh, this is how this uh, this dark, <laughs> deep sound uh, is created. But we we can uh, see this in in uh, life in a further video later on.